As I imagine many beginners do, I started making my first knife from a lawnmower blade. This design is a modified sort of uh, diving knife with line cutters on it, and is just a bit of practice as this sort of knife is a legal carry in the UK, and it's really just preparation for a more useful folding knife I'll be making later. I traced out the pattern onto the lawnmower blade, which was simple as the metal is already flat and mostly straight. I placed the template around the mounting hole, making it into a finger grip, and the tip of the knife unfortunately lay across a curving part near the edge of the blade, and I'll have to hammer that flat later. I cut out as much as I could with a hacksaw, more with the angle grinder and the rest with anything else. At this stage the metal was still hardened, as the shed I store the forge in was jammed shut after a storm. I created a rough shape and retraced the template and blade grind onto the metal with a chalk marker. began a rough grind of the blade and the idea is to get about 80% done using a power file which was the closest to I could find a belt grinder under 500 pounds. I can only do so much work as the tip is still slightly curved and it's throwing me off on the grind. After cutting free the parts of my shed damaged by the storm I got out of the forge, see one of my earlier videos to first straighten and then anneal the metal, then later on to harden the metal again. After hammering out the small curve I allowed the metal to cool gradually and so soften the metal, allowing the final shaping to be done with a lot greater ease than the first. I next filed out the line cutters using needle files, on the softened metal it was much easier. I measured out some brass rod and stainless steel tube to pin the wooden handle together, using calipers to make sure everything was the right size. Pinholes are drilled out at this stage as the steel is soft and will spare the drill bits. 
And once this is done, the knife is 90% shaped and ready to be hardened. Reel at the forge to first hammer in a maker's mark with a homemade die carved from an old cylindrical bearing. I weld it on a length of rod and use a hammer to bash it somewhat accurately into the metal. The next technique used for replacing carbon lost during forging I took from a video by Learning Connection with an X by dumping the blade into a bucket of sawdust. cool again and heat the metal back up to critical temperature to quench harden it in oil. During tests I used linseed oil but after watching last Frontier Knives video I got some black used engine oil to add even more carbon back into the blade. At first I only dip the hot metal in quickly and return it to the heat as described in the linked video before finally quenching. The metal was kept moving under the oil until it stopped smoking. I tested for cracks by listening to the sound it makes when struck. Dead sound would reveal a crack. Testing revealed that water quenching the steel would result in cracks. The next stage is to clean off all the black gunk and shine up the surface for tempering. The blade is put into a vise and a blowtorch used to heat up the spine of the knife up to a blue spring temper. This process was a lot trickier than it appeared in videos. I took a piece of oak burr for the handle, which I shaped with bandsaw to the tang of the knife. I drilled in the pinholes through the tang using a clamp to ensure they lined up. Using the table saw, I divided the piece in two. The blade of the knife and the table saw were nearly identical, so the grain pattern looked more continuous when it was put together. Using 6mm brass rod and stainless steel tubing, I cut the pins and 
With pins in place, I refined the handle shape uh, with the power file and rasps until all that was needed was sanding. The next step being to glue the parts together. I tried out some wood dyes, but eventually decided the burr was nice enough for just a simple polish. Using a basic two-part epoxy, I glued the two handle pieces and the pins in place. Filed down the pins to a mill on either side, then pinned the ends with a small hammer. Finally, a bit of sanding and a polish with beeswax completed the handle. I decided to leave the temper colors on the blade as I love the colors, but they will probably scratch off over time. Lastly, I made a leather sheath for attaching to a belt, which is made from veg tanned leather. If I ever use this knife for anything other than picking my teeth, <laughs> I will make a report and see how it stands up to work.